Hi, my name is Corey Mayo, licensed realtor with Monument Sotheby's, and welcome to Who's in the House, your podcast for everything coastal Delaware. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. That way you're updated every time I upload new podcasts or videos. And if at any time you have questions, feel free to email us at info at who's in the house, D-E as in Delaware.com. You can also call or text 302 466 Five five one one. Now sit back and enjoy this episode of Who's in the House. Um, welcome to Who's in the House. Excited to have you, um, Austin. You're selling over at Cardinal Grove and Lightship Cove are your two main communities that you're selling in right now. Yes, sir. Awesome. Um, one being a Lewis community, one's a Milton community. Going to focus pretty much primarily on Cardinal Grove because there's a lot that's going on there, and we'll have a little you know extra conversation about you know teaser some cycling stuff that's going on that that Shell Brothers and you kind of started. So we'll um, you know talk about that you know as we after we get through Cardinal Grove, but cool um, Cardinal Grove Lewis community located off of Beaver Dam Road. Um, you know how how everything has been going there since every, you did you launch yeah Cardinal Grove yep. okay. so I launched that community um, was really excited for it um, you know obviously being right up the street from Coastal Club um, we knew it was going to be a fun one sure um, and knew that we would have some interests some people that were you know looking to move over from Coastal Club um, so we've been excited about it for a long time and, and you know being very similar to a lot of the communities that I have sold well, I was going to say that like yeah. you you did. Saddle Ridge and Outer Banks, which are both two communities. So this is like your wheelhouse. Yeah, right, right in my bread and butter. Yeah, um, you know, like to do those communities that are under a hundred homes. Um, so it was, it was right up my alley. And total number of units. Let's see here. Yeah, we're at ninety eight. Ninety eight. Okay, yep. awesome. Um, you know the the great thing is, as I'm looking at this, the majority of the super desirable lots are now what's what's you know either available or you know soon to come. Yeah. Um, so that's that's great. You know, being on. Beaver Dam Road, you know, distance to, you know, typically we're talking about, you know, area amenities. Five Points would probably be the closest one. How far is it from Five Points? Just about four miles. Four miles. Yep. And Five Points for people that are watching, that's kind of the main point to when people are coming down from up north. That's like when you kind of know that you've hit. You've hit Lewis. Like you're you're in the beach area. Yep. Um, And you would make a right to go inland. Correct. Toward Carnal Grove. Yep. Um, Beaver Dam Road is one of those arteries that's... Like a, a hidden secret that not a lot of people know to utilize to, to get, you know, from, you know, east to west. Yeah. Um, so this being there, it's a quick way of getting to the beaches and all of that without having to deal with the traffic, which yeah. is, which is a, a huge plus. Yeah. I say all the time about that road. It, it, it is a residential road. You know, yeah. there, no, there no, are true. really no businesses all the way along it. Yep. Um, you know, and it is neighborhoods going all the way up. Yep. So it, it is traveled to get to and from home. Yeah. And if you come out and you make a right heading, you know, inland, you're, I don't know, 20 minutes ish to like BJ's, which would be like you yep. know, Route 113, which is. I always describe as kind of like a, a, a main two lane highway that most people have in, in their town of where you would have like a, a Walmart or, or, you know, BJ's and to yeah. Costco, like that type of road. All of that is, you know, up and down. So that's 20 minutes away to have all of that. Absolutely. And five minutes ish to be at Route 1. Yeah. You know, um, toes in the sand. I'm going to, you know, shoot from the hip 15 minutes, 20, yeah. you know, 20, 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15. Then, you know, I have a video on my phone that I send to people. It's 13 minutes long oh, from cool. awesome. um, Bay Beach down in Lewis to the uh, entrance of the community. Yep. So. And that was, you know, and, and obviously with you selling both communities, I did a video, you know, back in the beginning of the year because Beaver Dam is that main artery heading from Five Points inland toward both Lightship Cove and, and Cardinal Grove, you come to an intersection of uh, Beaver Dam and Fisher. Yep. You know, you go right on Fisher to go toward Lightship and left to go towards Cardinal Grove. And I think that people think when they hear Milton and Lightship Cove, oh, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And it literally ended up being like just like a minute farther away. So yeah. I think people think dogfish right off the, the yeah, bat. No, that's, you know, uh, yeah, that's think, true. Think of that as kind of the landmark and think like, hey, like if it's Milton, it's in that downtown Milton area. Sure. Um, and Milton's a pretty big town. It is. Um, you know, it spreads out. And, and, you know, we're on like the cusp of that Lewis uh, Milton line with yeah. where Lightship Cove is. And, and it's not that downtown area. Yeah. Like 
a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, Which yeah. is why I was like, you know, I'm going to do a video. And I'm going to like, I had a stopwatch, like, literally, that kind of like overlays on the video. And it's like, we, here's Cardinal Grove, here's Life Yeah. And, you know, for me, and you probably hear it more than I do, I wanted to do that because they are so similar. Yeah. You know, the communities really are, I mean, they're close in price point, they're close in, you know, community <laughs> offering amenities, floor plans. Absolutely. You know, and so it's like, hey, you know, this way you can really kind of, you know, decipher because they're, they're different settings. Yeah. Absolutely. Different settings. And then, you know, the other thing that, that's kind of come into play with those two communities, you have two different styles of, of where the communities are at this point. Okay. So you have, you know, Cardinal Grove that's had a lot of building, has homes that are settled, um, amenities are under construction. Um, you know, we're opening up new phases of construction in there. So that community is well underway. Sure. Um, whereas a Lightship Cove is brand new. You know, the, the entrance into the community isn't fully done yet. Yep. Um, you know, we have the model that's under construction, but haven't started our second home quite yet. Yep. So definitely getting in at the early stage of that community, whereas Cardinal Grove, you're getting in, you know, kind of at the middle and, and, you know, getting towards the end, um, you know, here in the future as we open up some of those new lots. And just, you know, real quick, I know that we're, we want to primarily focus on, on Cardinal Grove, but I do yeah. just want to ask, um, I did get an email about the model over at Lightship Cove. Yep. Is that still available? It is not. It oh. is sold. Yep. Right. So, yeah, so we sent out an email, I believe, I what was it, Monday or Tuesday? They go so fast. Yeah. yeah and it, it was sold within 48 hours. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it was quick. Well, I figured we, we could give yeah. a, a shameless plug here yeah. on. I'll give, a, I'll give a shameless shout out to Tara for selling that so quickly. Oh, good for her. Good yeah. for her. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, it's it's. I can't wait till it's done. And so, yeah, it's gorgeous. Well, and it's it's part of. Is that part of Easy Living? It is. Yep. And that, it, that's the Hadley. Hadley. The Hadley, yep. which yep. is a. You know, I actually my neighbors that live right next to me who are in yeah. Cardinal Grove. They, yeah, they yeah. built one, and I saw some pictures of. It. I haven't been through one yet. It reminds me of like some touches of like a lilac because it has that staircase with the return on it. So I, yep. I can't wait. I'm sure it's going to be an awesome floor plan. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good one. Um, very similar to the Jasmine model that we had at one oh, point okay. over in Governors. Yeah, a um, little bit expanded from that. You know, okay. kind of like that Southport lilac conversation. Um, yeah, very okay. similar with the Jasmine and and Hadley. Oh, is, so that's kind of where that a little bit they, they widened it, put some yeah, characteristics yeah. from the Jasmine transferred over. Spot on. That, that that's cool. Yeah. Um. So for Cardinal. Grove, uh, you know, to kind of play off of that conversation, talking about floor plans. Yeah. You know, Shell obviously has Coastal Cottage Series, which is 36 foot wide floor plans. Yeah. Newer, newer meaning year and a half, two, whatever. Yeah. You know, uh, floor plan, easy living, which is 40s. Yep. 40 foot series. And then the, the courtyards, which are, you know, 50 ish. Exactly. Um, this community is kind of a, a mix of the Coastal Cottage and the easy living, correct? Spot on. Yeah. Yep. Um, a lot of uh, floor plans are kind of are shared between Lightship Cove and Cardinal Grove, but not all. They are. So um, yes and no on the, the not but all. So some of the marketing that we do have out there, we're, we're just trying to limit, you know, what's in front of you. Sure. Um, you know, so there are certain floor plans that we don't list on here. For example, like at Cardinal Grove, we have the Kingfisher that's available. Oh, really? Um, okay. On some specific lots. Sure. Okay. Um, you know, we don't market that because it is very specific to the lots. But yeah, if yeah. It, it ends up being the right scenario and the right equation, you know, we'll sit down and work through that as well. Um, so there are some things that can be built over at Lightship Cove and at Cardinal Grove that may not be listed on the website. It just depends on the, the fit of the lot. Yeah, which I think is is key because, you know, as we know, the Kingfisher is one of the top selling, you know, two-story floor plans that Shell offers. And, yeah. um, you know, there's sometimes that maybe you fall in love with the Kingfisher you fall in love with a Welch's Pond or maybe Walden, yeah. but the price point is now just kind of pushing you out a little bit. This gets you, number one, I mean, if you're comparing to maybe some other, you know, more inland communities, this gets you closer to Lewis. Absolutely. Because you're four miles off of, you know, five points, but you can also potentially do the Kingfisher at, at a more aggressive price point. Yeah. Um, so, and that is, so that would be if someone, if that's a circumstance that they're in, obviously call you and let's kind of go through the, let's look at home sites would fit. Absolutely. Okay. And then see yeah, if they so like the home site. As of right now, I think we have like three home sites available that it fits on. Um, in the future, those ones up there on the curve, 22, 23, 24. Okay. Um, we'll all be able to accommodate a Kingfisher. Oh, wow. So, um, and tons of, of green, open green space behind it, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. And that, that's a wooded area there. Um, so it is dense trees all behind those lots. So they are nicely wooded lots. So you're going to have space and woods. Yep. Space awesome. and woods. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's really nice. And we have one being built right now on lot 93. So 
93, where am I? Down there on the curve around the pond. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So, Yeah, I mean, and that is, um, you know, again, I think that's just, you know, for topic of discussion with you for people that are, you know, again, they fall in love with the Kingfisher. This is, this is legit. So, yeah. Um, the community itself, HOA 275 ish, I think it is. Yeah. So 274 exactly, um, includes cutting your grass, no removal, trash removal, recycling, access to the community pool, um, and amenity. So mainly an outdoor amenity there. Um, you know, pool with barbecue grill patio area, sun ledge in the pool, cabana style seating, um, we'll also have a fireplace outside oh, with cool. trellis and everything, so yeah, a yeah. nice lounge area. Um, and then the walking trail around the pond, so some nice amenities in there. And um, obviously you can do outdoor living space on, on your home. Yeah. You know, I, I know that we found that, like, Outer Banks, I listed Outer Banks, you know, yeah. for, for Shell Brothers. Yeah, yeah. And so I was able to see a lot of the homes that were being built there, a lot of outdoor living space because there was – even less. I mean, it was just a pool and a pool house, basically, because yep, it, it was it was very small uh, size community, only like fifty home sites, 40, exactly. 49 home sites. Um, so a lot of people are doing outdoor living space. So rather than like gathering at the clubhouse, they just gather at your amazing, beautiful, you know, Shell yep. Brothers home that you built. So outdoor living space is available here. Yeah, as well. outdoor living space can do screen porch, deck, um, courtyard, any combination. Um, and then also we have the availability. You can add your own pool if you wanted oh, to cool. to your own yard. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you wanted to do that after settlement. Absolutely a possibility. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, another shameless plug, Pools and Spas Unlimited of Milford, you know. All right. <laughs> They're actually sponsoring uh, today's podcast. <laughs> today's podcast is brought to you by Pools and Spas Unlimited of Milford. How am I going to sell all these hot tubs? we are help you, Mark. Well, let's go, boys. Well, this would help our achy backs. Absolutely. Is it going to be easy to take care of? With our built-in salt system, it'll be a breeze. Is this going to bring our stress level down? It'll help you relax and sleep like a baby. Can people come try them out? Why not? No, 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 no. Yeah. Come see us today. Nice. Um, so, so I think that's that's great because, you know, again, you know, Yes, you have the outdoor gathering space that you can go to, which is wonderful. But you know, a lot of a lot of people, and I think different builders kind of approach the outdoor living space differently. Um, you know, I used to work for a builder, and I would probably say ninety uh, percent of our homes had stairs down to down to grass backyard. Yep. Which I don't know. You know, yeah. you know, moving to coastal Delaware, it's you know, yes, your house is great, but you want to be outside and enjoy it. So, yeah. I, I appreciate the fact that you guys have invested time in the engineering of, of like real outdoor living spaces and the fact that you don't have to have someone come in afterwards and tie into your brand new home, you know, nail, you know, band boards into the house or scrape, you know, heavy construction stuff against your foundation. Yeah. Just get it you yeah. know, right from the get go. And, and, you know, the other thing to speak to there too is, is the warranty side of things. You know, yeah, if true. you're doing something afterwards, you know, you're, you're voiding a lot of those warranties. Yep. Um, whereas if you're doing it through us, all of that work is warranted. Yeah. Um, well, and especially because you know, it goes a long way. Yeah. Well, and a screened in porch, I mean, it, yeah. the screened in porch requires a roof oh, yeah. to be enclosed. Yeah. So now you're going to have someone afterwards tie into your brand new roof. And yep. it's like, you know, so if there's a leak, whose fault is it? Yep. You know, and, and that is it, right there. We're going to defer because, yep. you know, somebody else had to crack into the work that we did, sure. you know, to, to create that roof line. So, yeah. you know, in that regard, it's it's definitely worth doing it through us. Yeah. A hundred percent. And yeah. and again, you get to just kind of move in. Yeah. Move in and, and enjoy it. And you know, it's easy for us to spend people's money, right. but honestly, you know, when you take that and you start to break it down, when you're, if you're going to be having a mortgage, it's like, hey, you know, yeah. the ease of living and just get moving right into it is great. And, um, you know, a lot of the floor plans, when you start looking at the, you know, sunrooms or screened in porches, it just adds so much, you know, additional living space. And while even the screened in porch isn't um, considered square footage in the home, yeah. it's living square footage for sure. Absolutely. You know, and especially if you're on like one of these wooded sites, I mean, there's trees there. Yeah. There's just going to be bugs. Absolutely. You know, just sit out there and have a glass of wine and not have to worry about, you know, mosquitoes and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, um, it's a very nice feature. Yeah. It's it's one of those communities, you know, when it first came online, I was wondering kind of how it was going to start to develop because it's like a, a narrow entryway yeah. and you kind of see the, see the monument and then. The first time I drove in there and just all of a sudden it like opens up, yeah, which is cool because it's like the whole thing's kind of hidden back behind this 
this whole set of trees and some homes that are there, which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's very similar to Saddle Ridge. Um, True. You know, yeah. Saddle Ridge was 81 total homes, very similar layout in terms of the oval kind of layout. Yeah. Um, you know, you had wooded sites around the exterior, pond sites on the interior, small cul-de-sac. Yeah. Um, so it mirrored a lot of those same things. And, and again, with like the entrance, you know, coming off of 24 there, yeah. you know, it's just that little hill down and then it kind of opens Opened up and everything else. Um, so I was really excited when I saw the layout for this one. It's, it's very similar. Well, and I love that oval-ish. I know this is, uh, you know, not quite an oval, but that yeah. that style because every home site's good. If you're looking for a pond view, you get an interior lot. If you're looking for wooded view, you get an exterior lot. It's really that kind of that simple. You yeah. know, and they're all, it's like, I'm not sure which is a good lot, which is a bad lot besides, you know, maybe on the turn having a little bit wider where you can fit a Kingfisher. But other than that, if you're yeah. looking at a, you know, a Monterey or something, yeah. You know, every lot's kind of kind of good. You know, you're in good Absolutely. shape. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I say it all the time. I mean, you can you can get whatever you want. You know, if you want a wooded home site, we have it. If you want a basement home site, we have it. Oh, you do? You have basement yeah. home sites? Yep. Yeah. So we still have some basement home sites available, um, mainly in this first phase that we have open now. Okay. Um, as we open up those later phases, we may have a few more, but not many. Okay. Yeah. So so the majority of these along the edge, you know, just don't don't have basement options. Okay. Yeah. The good thing is, is that you still have a ton of a ton of yellow home sites that are available. Yeah. Yeah. And for people that are watching, red means sold and yellow means that it's available. So there are, are lots of opportunities here. Um, 37 should be sold. I, I mean, 30, I agree. <laughs> I'm just looking at right. this. Um, it's an awesome home site. That should yep. that should be sold. I mean, the the, the uh, amount of privacy in the back of that home site is you yeah. know, it, it's it's pretty pretty and awesome. And that's a basement wooded home site too. Oh, is it? So it's a good one. Really nice. Now there's a couple, and I don't know if it's that are had like a walk out is this part of that or is that farther down the road they are gone now so it would have been home sites 33 through 35 okay. there could have done a walk out yep um depending on options and floor plan sure um 50 and 51 have some potential um just depends on floor plan and how, how deep into the lot we're going okay yeah, and, and the one thing, and I, and I never thought about when we had um, Joe and Carol from Walden on here, and we were yeah. talking about walkout, and he's like, the only problem, though, is that you don't really have a usable backyard yeah. or as much. You have to build, you know, your yeah. patio unless you're, like, on the, on the acre to where it, like, you know, sprawls out. So, absolutely, you know, we have, just have so many, all of these, you know, the ones that have basements, so long as it fits and is within the building, you know, restriction lines have a walk up access to where Absolutely. you can do a weld exit to, to go up to the backyard yeah. or, or get out of, out of it if you want to. And I had the conversation recently with somebody, you know, about that outdoor living space and the grading and, and things like that. You know, when you have a walkout, you know, like you said, you're building at basement level for sure. any type of outdoor space. Yep. Um, or you have, you know, a really elevated screen porch or a really elevated True. deck that yeah. you have, you know, a staircase that you have to go down to the main yep. level with. Yeah. Um, when you have that, like you said, you're taking up quite a bit of the backyard space, um, you know, just with that staircase. Yeah. Um, so if you are doing it, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, you know, if you want everything at the same level, you know, odds are you probably don't want to walk out basement. Yeah, it has to be something that like that's like you're really into that. Yeah. Maybe you've had it for the past 20 years or whatever. And like, Absolutely. hey, we just and number one extremely rare to find here. Yeah. Like, I mean, Del you know, this part of Delaware is like, you know, table flat. So, yeah. um, so when it does come up, it does, you know, it's rare, but you know, again, it needs to really, you need to think it through. And I think that sometimes yeah. we go oh, walk out and we like run to it and it's yeah. like, well, I didn't think about all, all of the, all of it, but you know, for those that it works for, it's awesome. Absolutely. Um, the community itself. So, we, you know, obviously we've got, you know, a, a wide range or a wide variety of floor plans and they're ranging, I've never seen a Camden before, personally. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously that's going to be a smaller two to three bedroom home, and it goes all the way up to what's the biggest, the Southport. Southport. Yeah. Okay. Um, and everywhere in between. So you have here one, two, three, the Stonefield. So you have you know five single story. You know, starting yeah. off, so you can build on to. But here's what I think is awesome. But is the Camden Courtyard or is that um, Easy Living? Easy Living. Easy Living. Yep. So uh, does that have the 12-foot great room or no? It does not. It does not. So no. you have the Monterey and the Stonefield, which both have like 12-foot or something. Yeah. like Dining ceilings room, in, great room. In, in the great room, which yeah. is if you've never been in one that's like that compared to 10-foot ceilings, yeah. this the space of the, of the ceilings is great, but... Because you guys are like a Windows first kind of home, the way the, the way that your homes are designed, 
it allows for that much more window compared to a 10 foot ceiling. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a major difference. And the Monterey has become one of our most popular floor plans. I, since we I, built I the believe model. it. Yeah. I believe it. Um, you know, we've heard a lot about the Mayberry and the Wimbrel for a long time as two of our really, really popular ranch style models. And, and the Monterey has really started to come in as, as that third key component. Sure. Um, you know, and in some ways, you know, we have a lot of people who like the Monterey more than they like the Wimbrel now. I believe it. Um, so it is, I, I think really become that, that, top tier ranch style home that we have to offer. Well, I think when, when this was designed, you know, and I don't mean to always kind of like pat shell on the back, but you know, right. I mean, you guys seem to kind of like think through stuff as you do it instead of just like designing a new floor plan. It's like, yeah. let's hear what people loved about some of the other floor plans yeah. and use that information. So for example, you know, the Wimbrel, which is, I think I call the, the Swiss army knife of yeah. floor plans. It kind of fits. It does everything really, really well. It's wide. It does, you know, but the when you come in off the off of the garage, you have mud room, laundry room combined. Yep. Um, it doesn't have a powder room. So the Monterey has when you come into a mud room, and then you have on the other side of the house a designated separate laundry room like the yep. Cassidy would have, and you have a separate you know powder room. Which yeah. for anyone that you have guests that are using the bathroom, I mean you have toothbrushes and towels, and then you have friends that come over from maybe within the community. Now they're using utilizing that bathroom. It's nice Absolutely. to have that that powder room. So yeah, it's huge I, and makes it much more of a comparison for something like the Mayberry. Sure, yeah, you no, know, no, no, no doubt about it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, the first time I walked through the Monterey was it wasn't quite jaw dropping, but I was like, yeah. wow. I mean, it really is. It's um. It's a beautiful flow and the the included countertop. Yeah, you know that island that comes with it. That's yeah. I don't know, like five hundred yards wide. Like that's, it's a massive, massive. Um, you know, you, you know, you can upgrade if you want to to a command yeah. center, but it, you don't have to. You don't have to in it's, that one. You know, which yeah. is which is an awesome saving. So yeah, really, and that one has a lot of changes, like from the Montauk, for example. So the Montauk mm. and the Monterey are very similar floor plans, but they're a few differences. You know, like you said, the the um, Powder room, you know, being the main one, sure. um, and then separating that laundry and mud room again, and just adding a little bit more square footage. Those are the three main changes from Montauk to Monterey, um, and that is what has made that floor plan so appealing. Well, and and so a common thing that I hear from the Montauk a lot from people is they they'll, they'll describe when they go in, they go, "Oh, this is cozy." Yep. Which is you know a nice way of saying this. It's on the little bit smaller side. I would Absolutely. never think that the Monterey would be thought of as cozy it'd be like wow yeah. this is you know and i think that's also because of those 12 foot ceilings absolutely it stretches it out it's, it's really it's it's done done extremely well. and the stone field is just like a whole another another beast i mean that is yeah. um a, a really spectacular you know well thought out floor plan yeah and some cool options on that one too depending on what you do with it yep yeah yeah when you add that sunroom off the yeah. back it just stretches the whole whole house out you know, yeah like, it really makes it nice yeah. in that dining area yep um, and again, both of these floor plans are are both communities, correct? Yep, both communities offer both. Yep, um, and then we have five, you know, two story floor plans. The Southport being the biggest, which is um, kind of what we were talking about earlier uh, with the Hadley and the Jasmine. This is kind of the big brother of of the Lilac. Yep, and we offer the Lilac as well. That's just going to be one of those ones that we don't have on here oh, for yeah. marketing. Okay, um, we've sold you know a Lilac in, in Cardinal Grove already. Um, depending on options, I think it is really where you end up with Southport or Lilac. There's some, there's something upstairs. Yeah, I, had, yeah. I had a client that was down in Marlin Chase and was going to be doing a Southport. And I forget what it was. Is something with the bedroom configuration or something or the bonus room? So, so upstairs, there's three bedrooms that are standard in the, um, in the Southport and the Lilac. In okay. the Lilac, you have the ability to add a second bathroom up there. Um, in okay. the Southport, you do not. You don't. Okay. Yep. I knew there was something with that. And, and it's, but the Southport is, um, so because it's a wider, a lot of people just think that it, they just kind of added, to, you know, wide, yeah. widened it by, you know, four feet or whatever it was. And it's it's not. It's like yeah. it's in the right place. They they stretched it from like the middle. Like exactly. kind of put that square footage in the living room where I think not that the lilac needed it, but yeah. it's nice to have it there for sure. Absolutely. When there's extensions offered, you know, you want to take advantage of them. Yeah. You know, if you can stretch it out, you stretch it out. But stretch it out in the right place. Exactly. Like if you stretch it out on the dining room, on, it on, if you sense. just added that square footage to the side of the house, it'd be like, you know, now this is a really big, you know, dining space, whereas they put yeah. it in the right space, which again is kind of that thoughtfulness that I, again, not to continue to pat you guys on the back, but hey, I'll you, take it. <laughs> you think about it, you know, it's like, you know, what's, what's the right, right way of, of where we should put this? Agreed. Um, so, you know, really good offering there. Um, you know, the amenities are, 
I think, put it into what I've been seeing with a lot of communities nowadays. I mean, I, I don't know why. I mean, there's obviously still communities that have, like, the full-blown clubhouse yeah. and all of that. But I, a, a lot of communities, not just with you guys, just really kind of across the board you know, of, of new launch communities in coastal Delaware have been kind of minimizing, I think, the the, um, the big clubhouse and maybe yeah. – Giving you know, giving some some square or, or acreage back to the community because it's yeah. not used as much. I don't know. What, Spot what, on. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, Saddle Ridge, eighty-one home uh, community. I live in that community. Um, you know, with that being said, it, I drive in every night after work, and the clubhouse is pitch black. It's dark. Yeah. Um, you know, so we have that. You know, it, it is in our community. It's an eighty-one home total community. Um, but it doesn't get used. You yeah. know, we use it during the summertime because we're going to the pool. Sure. And, you know, somebody might do, you know, play a card game in there or something like that. But um, outside of our HOA meeting, there's really no reason to go in there. And, you know, our HOA meeting has transitioned to being on Zoom now. True, um, yeah. You know, and a lot of them have because everybody can attend. It makes it so much easier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't have to leave. Yeah, I mean, unless you're, you know, like Peninsula Lakes, they have, I forget what they call it, a, a lifestyle coordinator yeah. or something who is employed by the HOA that their job is to schedule things. And it is a very active community or, or clubhouse. And that's because there's someone that is, their job is to do this. Yeah. Um, if, you know, and so you would take Saddle Ridge, for example, and hire that person. Yeah. And, well, now your HOA goes up because you got you have to pay for that salary somehow. Absolutely. Um, at at uh, Peninsula Lakes, you've got 600 units, so it's a very small. It affects each resident, you know, from a very small amount. Um, so it's like, yeah, you know. So this, yeah. you put the money into like where people really want to be, which is you know in the in the summertime swimming and doing some activities. Absolutely, so, and, and that's what gets used. You know, I mean, the pool is what gets used, and um, you know, at the playground a little bit by you know if there's kids in the neighborhood and, and things like that, but. Um, the clubhouse just really isn't utilized for for the amount that you're paying for it. Agree. And, and it is a long term expense with um, internet, cable, you know, utilities, and all those things. So it's not just like you're getting this clubhouse and you get to use it. You're yeah. paying for it well, long term. Yeah, and when you find out afterwards it's not being used a lot, yeah. you don't like get rid of it. Exactly. <laughs> it's not like oh, let's take, take the bike rack and yeah. you know it's a whole you know clubhouse. So yeah. what happens? It just sits there and you know. Yeah. So and the, and the alternatives for like how do we utilize it or how do we get it back? You know, some of those are, you know, not favored. You know, I'm, I'm not necessarily in favor. You know, of having it rented out for other HOA meetings True. or things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, then there's other people that are coming in and using it and, you know, we're paying for it. Yeah. Um, you know, so there are those those things that, that you kind of think about on that end where, you know, if we just had an outdoor amenity, it get used at the time that it's open. And then when it's closed, it's closed. Put your yeah. money, put, put your monthly HOA dues to better use. Yeah. You know, which is which is great. Um, you know, the, the whole community is is irrigated so yep. everything looks nice and beautiful the Absolutely. homes include irrigation yep all the homes include irrigation at base price um all the common areas are, are lawn and landscape irrigated as well um so everything's taken care of in the community i know this is community community more hoa but are you allowed to do irrigation wells there you are oh cool yep so yes at cardinal grove no at light chip cove no at light chip cove yep. so and and that's you know not going to be your biggest determining factor, but just yeah. something to think about. It's it's nice to be able to have, um, you know, irrigation wells in there, which I don't understand why. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, H whole different it's a, topic. It's a county thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I mean, you know, it's nice to be able to have that. Um, so average size of home sites in, in the community. Obviously, there's some bigger ones for kingfishers, but yeah. what's the average size? Um, average size is right about 7,500 square feet, and then north from there, um, all the homes will guarantee to have 20 feet in between. Um, so you will have nice spacing in between homes. So um, t 10 and 10 on either side? 10 and 10 on okay. either side. Yep. And then obviously that's that creates your building envelope. So that would be off the off the property line in 10 feet. But your yep. home, if it's, you know, let's just say you did a lilac, which yep. is a narrower floor plan, that would actually give some additional space. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you don't get pushed. You know, it doesn't go all yep. the way. The and the then any, anywhere that's on one of those curves, you know, you're opening up even more on the side. So some of those um, lots that pie out, you yeah. know, and give you kind of that pie shape. Um, rather than giving you, you know, that straight rectangle, um, those ones will be a little bit bigger. And then awesome. also offer more space in between homes, which is nice. Awesome. And um, where where have you found, obviously being there from the launch, you, you know this, where have you found 
obviously we have our starting starting price point. And I don't mean yeah. base price. Like what have you found kind of like realistic starting price point and then kind of that like median, you know, in the middle price yeah. point. So I, I think the nice thing with these small communities again is it lends itself, yeah, there's always going to be an average buying price. Yeah. Um you know, there's a home that we have under construction right now that's going to settle right around 520. Wow. Um, you know, we also have a, a home that's going to settle that following week that's going to be at 960. Um, wow to that too. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, wide range of, of what we can do. Um, you know, I would say most people are, you know, in that, that 600 to 700 category okay. um, for the most part. You know, 700 plus would be if you're, you're thinking about a basement. Um, you know, or anything like that. Yeah, makes sense. Um, you know, but a lot of folks have stayed right around that six fifty to seven hundred mark. You know, pretty easily. And on on average, when you're talking to people, so we would have what we would see online as our base price. Yeah. And then I I typically will tell someone think of without a basement. You know, you're gonna with your lot premium and add ons, hundred to one hundred and fifty maybe in Spot on. in act in add ons. You know? Yeah. And that, you know, that would be flooring and kitchen up, yep. up not just, you know, colors, fit and finishes, not, yeah. not doorknobs, but like, like real options, structural options and everything. Absolutely. And, and that's typically what we see, you know, 100 to 150 with somebody without a basement, um, you know, is typically what we're seeing. You know, you can definitely be under that 100 mark. It, it all depends on what your taste is and, sure. and, and what you're thinking about. You know, there's no doubt about it. You know, if you're buying a Shell Brothers home, there are upgrades in it a already. A ton of included options. So you are getting an upgraded home from you know, what you would get with some other folks. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. I do have a client who signed over at Lightship Cove and she put $5,000 into it. Yeah. No you doubt know? about it. So I was like, you know, great. And she's like, this yeah. is everything that I've wanted the way that it is. And she's like, I don't need a, a crazy kitchen. I don't do a whole bunch of cooking. It'll Absolutely. be perfectly fine. And I just want the quality. I want the two by six construction and the amount of block and PEX plumbing and all that kind of shelter stuff that yeah. goes into the quality of the home. The quality means more to me than the glitz and glam, yeah. and, you know, kind of and stuff. A, so. And a lot of that stuff, you know, it, it's the same thing. It, you know, you can get any of those interior cosmetic features really at any time. Um, you know, but once you peel back the walls and what's there, you know, that's the stuff you really can't change. That's and, what, yeah. You know, I've heard you say that, you know, firsthand with clients before as well, you know, yeah. just in, in talking about, you know, your situation and, and stuff like that. You know, you can make it look as beautiful as you want, but when you peel back the walls, you know, what's there behind is not going to change. Yeah. I, I say I have the most Shell Brothers Ryan home that there is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I've heard you say Yeah. I, I, I live in a, a Ryan home and that was because when we moved down here, we, um, we had young children and we needed yeah. like the community that had the highest quantity of children. And that was, you know, what was really important to us. But, um, you know, there's, you know, things about my home that I, I love and things that are, are different. Yeah. Um, but yes, I have, you know, renovated my home as much as I can. And it's from the cosmetic standpoint, Yeah. but I'll, obviously I'm not going through and reframing my, my walls and, and redoing yeah. all the insulation. So I, I, I live with what I live with. Um, but I knew that going into it, but you guys do. I mean, even if you get the Camden, you yeah. know, your smallest home, it's still built the same way as a Waterford, you know, Absolutely. a million dollar house in Welch's Pond and a house that's built in Lightship Cove or Cardinal Grove is the same exact house in yep. any community that there is out there, just in a different location. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that Cardinal Grove, again, for those people that are, I don't want to say price conscious, because that's not really what, what, what I'm yeah. meaning, but like, hey, I don't want to be up in that million dollar price point. I'm trying to be something that's more in that like, you know, five to 600. Yep. This is a, a real option. But the key thing, in my opinion, and this is what I tell my clients, is a lot of times when we're searching for this price point, we got to go inland. Yep. So, like, get on 24 or get on Beaver Dam and yeah. drive, drive in, get in towards Millsboro. Now we start to get into that price point. So the fact that we're still four miles from being in, like, the middle of all the fun, you yeah. know, we're, you know, 10, 15 minutes from having toes in the sand, unheard of. So yeah. super great opportunity for everybody. So... Um, yeah, absolutely. If this is something, you know, you know, th this is one to consider you know, yeah. for sure. And as I said, you know, I always use the analogy, you know, for trying on pairs of jeans and when you put on the right pair, you know, they fit right. Yeah. Th just try this. You know, it does. It's, it's free. Yeah. It's free to stop in. It's free to check out the Monterey. It's free to check out the community and see, see how it fits. And then, yeah. It's funny that you use that analogy. I, I use the college visit all the time. Uh, um, no, that's true. It's like a yeah. college visit. You, you, you drive in in the first five minutes just of looking around, seeing campus. You know whether or not you want to go there. Yeah. No, that's, um, a, that's a really good one. Yeah. And it's very similar yep. with the yeah. home size. It is. And, and just just even just the flow of the community, you know, yeah. the way that the homes look, you know, I... 
I'll do it again. You know, you guys really do a good job with your elevation changes. Yeah. Some some builders, when you look at elevation A, B, and C, they just add like an extra peak to it or something, and it still looks like the same bones of the home yeah. just with a little bit of like like add-ons like stick a trellis there or something yeah. your homes truly look different from elevation to elevation from within the same floor plan absolutely so and because you guys have that triangle rule which yeah. means for people that don't know if you buy a house you can't have the same elevation on either side or across the street from you yep you know yes in some communities you change the elevation but it's like eh. Yeah, it's still kind of the same. It still looks the yeah, same. We can yeah. still tell. Yeah, um, they look different. They do, like really, they different. really do. You know, it's, and which is, you know, I mean, they completely just changed it, which can also affect some of the square footage of the home because sometimes yeah. you're ta- you're trying to make it look so much different. Absolutely. Um, and I, I'll give a shout out to our design team right now. Um, you know, they've done a great job with that triangle rule. Um, I, I cannot say enough great things about Cardinal Grove right now. It looks amazing it with, with all the different colors that are in there. Um, you know, I think we've gotten a, a trend for a little while of doing a lot of blues and grays in, in a lot of communities. And, um, you know, there's a lot of little pops of color in Cardinal Grove now with some greens and some tans and some yellows. Um, there's some really, really nice uh, layouts and colors in the, in the community. Yeah. And I have to do an updated one. I did a driving tour through there uh, i think it was like december ish yeah you know um you know driving through and kind of showing people with the cameras of, of what the community looks like but a lot of homes have closed since then so yeah i'll put that on, on my list because yeah that 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 shows that you know and, and you're right it is and they do a very good job of keeping people i don't want to say on trend because on trend means yeah. it's, it's going to go out but kind of thinking long term of like hey Absolutely. you know this is this fits with the community but you're not going to grow out of the style and exactly like oh that I remember that home must have been built in like 2024 exactly you know, like, you know they, they do a good job of you know it it lasting a lot like you drive through Car- or um, uh, Saddle Ridge yeah like, those homes could have been built yesterday absolutely you know, you no know which, which, which is great so Carmel Grove big thumbs up definitely you know we'll, you know we, we don't want to continue exposing that and having people you know visiting making their college visit to yeah. to, to Carmel Grove because yeah, it's a good one um. Now on the to topic two, which yeah. is which is um, a big one. Um, well, real, real quick, I'm going to rewind just for two seconds. I, I wanted to ask this question: What is your impression on clients that come in with representation? Um, I think they've done a. a it depends, you know. Okay. Um, you know, it, nothing's worse than I, I think when somebody comes in and it's like they're doing the first meeting for the first time. Okay. You know, in our office. Yeah. Um, agreed. You know, I, I think unfortunately it. it doesn't do the, the customer service. You know, I think they may have given some some basic details and said, hey, you know, this is kind of what we're interested in. And, and you know, the realtor might have access to some things on their end that, you know, they can pull up and, and kind of get you a game plan of where to go. But if you don't know the clients, like, personality and have talked to them and sure. have kind of gone back and forth and seen what those, like, hot buttons are, um, I almost think, you're doing a disservice at that point because you're, you're showing, you're like oversaturating what they're seeing. A hundred percent. Now, when somebody comes in, you know, and I'll toot your horn, you know, on this, oh, it, anybody that comes in that, that has been your client, you know them, you know something about them, you know what they're looking for. Um, you're also the realtor that's going to turn around and when they start saying, hey, what about this? You're super knowledgeable on the fact of like, yeah, that's not even going to work because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to waste our time in, in going over there, and we're not going to waste our time in driving out there and you know doing a car conversation about how this will work because it won't. Sure. Um, and, and I think that that is a huge help when you're coming in and not getting oversaturated and saying, hey, what am I missing out on? Because somebody like you is going to tell you, you're not missing out on anything. Yeah. You know, I, I know what that is. Kind I, of filtered out. Yeah. You know, through the, because there's like, I don't know, like 5,000 communities, yeah. it feels like. And yeah, yeah. I mean, we shouldn't be looking at all 5,000 because it's very yeah. easy. Um, and I always use that analogy that, you know, you know, you have to learn to, to hear or listen in here, whatever. Yeah. You need to like truly listen to what, you know, ask the questions and then that helps kind of filter through. Yeah. And we find that like three to four communities. Yeah. And it really is that simple, but 
You know, that's, that's my style. That's, that's, that's what works for me, at least. Absolutely. And I, like I said, I think you do a great job of it. You, well, know, you, you. start out at a, at a spot and, you know, you set the expectations of, hey, we're going to start here. This is our first pair of pants that we're trying on. And, and you know, we'll see how it works. And then from there, we'll, we'll go to this next thing. If this is the thing, we don't even need to go to that next thing. Yeah. You know, and, and I think it's a really great way to do it. So overall, you know, on, on a majority of the time, you know, having representation, I think is a great thing. You yeah. know, it, it usually means that, you're not going to sit there at the end of the process and say, okay, but what am I missing out on? Yep. You know, yeah. you probably someone, already Someone that's that. here and lives it is already trying to help. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and yeah, I'm here. I'd live it. And, and, you know, yeah, I work for Shell Brothers directly and, you know, and I'm an employee for them. But in that same token, like I live here too, you know, you're going to see me out in, in the, in the restaurants and you're going to see me at the beach and you're going to see me at those types of places, you know, we're, we're here to help too. True. You know, we want to point you in the right direction, whether that's, you know, with us at, at Cardinal Grove or, or if that's at another shell community, whether it be Welch's Pond or Marsh Island or, or so sure. on and so forth. Cool. Um, so we, we definitely respect the fact that, that you guys come out and, and especially when you're educated about, you know, your client and the communities, it's a fantastic fit. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. My, my shameless little plug there. But thank you so much, Ryan, for coming on. This has been awesome. And we'll do an update, have you back on to talk yeah. about um, Cardinal Grove and Lightship Cove, kind of how it's progressed, um, you know, in a couple of months. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of Who's in the House. If you still have questions, feel free to email us at info at who's in the house, D E as in Delaware.com. You can also call or text any questions to 302 466 five five one one and don't forget hit that subscribe button that notification bell and in the meantime keep an eye out for our next episodes we look forward to seeing you then have a great day